So back to it, I was <laughs> Physics Textbook of Class 11th Part 1 Chapter 2 Units and Measurement Narrated by Isna Rafat Khan Introduction Measurement of any physical quantity involves comparison with a certain basic arbitrarily chosen internationally accepted reference standard called unit The result of a measurement of a physical quantity is expressed by a number or numerical measure accompanied by a unit although the number of physical quantities appear to be very large we need only a limited number of units for expressing all the physical quantities since they are interrelated with one another the units of the fundamental and the basic quantities are called fundamental or base units the unit of all other physical quantities can be expressed as a combination of base units such units obtained from the derived quantities are called derived units a complete set of these units both base and derived unit is known as system of units the international system of units in earlier time scientists of different countries were using different systems of units for measurement three such systems the cgs the fps and the mks systems were in use extensively till recently the base units for length mass and time in these systems were as follows the cgs system they were in centimeters gram and seconds respectively in fps system they were in foot pound and second respectively in mks system they were in meter kilogram and second respectively the system of unit which is at present internationally accepted for measurement is the international system of units abbreviated as si the si with standard scheme of symbols unit and abbreviations was developed and recommended by general conference on ways and measure in 1971 for international usage in scientific technical industrial and commercial work both si units used decimal system conversions within the system are quite simple and convenient we shall follow the si unit in this book in si there are seven base units as given in the table 2.1 besides the seven base units there are two more units that are defined for a plane angle d theta as the ratio of length of the arc ds to the radius and b solid angle d sigma as the ratio of intercepted area da for the spherical surface described about the apex o as the center to the square of the radius r as shown in figure 2.1a and b respectively the unit for plane angle is radian with the symbol rad and the unit for solid angle is steradian with the symbol sr both these quantities are dimensionless table 2.1 si base quantities and units base quantity length name meter symbol m definition the meter is a length of the path traveled by light in vacuum during a time interval of 1 to the power 2997924584 of a second 1983 mass kilogram symbol kg definition the kilogram is equal to the mass of the international prototype of the kilogram a platinum iridium alloy cylinder kept at international bureau of weights and measure at serves near paris france 1889 time name second 
symbol S. Definition. The second is the duration of 9192631770 periods of the radiation corresponding to the transition between the two hyperfine levels on the ground state of cesium-133 atom. Electric current, ampere, symbol A. Definition, the ampere is that constant current which if maintained in the two straight parallel conductors of infinite length of negligible circular cross-section and placed one meter apart in vacuum would produce between these conductors a force equal to 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 newton per meter of length. Thermodynamic temperature, name Kelvin, symbol K. The Kelvin is a fraction of 1 by 273.16 of thermodynamic temperature of the triple point of water. Amount of substance. Name mole. Symbol MOL. The mole is the amount of substance of a system which contains as many elementary entities as there are atoms in 0.012 kg of carbon 12. Luminous intensity. Name candela. Symbol CD. The candela is the luminous intensity in a given direction of a source that emits monochromatic radiation of frequency 540 into 10 to the power 12 hertz and that has a radiant intensity in that direction of 1 by 683 watt per steradian. Note that when mole is used, the elementary entities must be specified. These entities may be atoms, molecules, ions, electrons, other particles or a specified group of such particles. We employ unit for some physical quantities that can be derived from the seven base units. Some derived units in terms of the base SI units are given in appendix a 6.1. Some SI derived units are given special names, Appendix A 6.2, and some SI derived units make use of these units with special names and the seven base units. These are given in Appendix A 6.2 and 6.3 for your ready reference. Other units retained for general use are in Table 2.2. Some SI prefix and symbol for multiple and submultiples are given in Appendix A2, General Guidelines for Using Symbols for Physical Quantities, Chemical Elements and Nucleides are given in Appendix A7, and those for SI units or some other units are given in Appendix A8, for your guidance and ready reference. Measurement of Length you are already familiar with some direct methods of the measurement of length. For example, a meter scale is used for length from 10 to the power minus 3 meter to 10 to the power 2 meters. A vernier caliper is used for length to an accuracy of 10 to the power minus 4 meter. A screw gauge and a spherometer can be used to measure lengths as less as 2. 10 to the power minus 5 meters. To measure length beyond these ranges, we can make use of some special indirect method. Measurement of large distance. Large distance such as distance of a planet or a star from Earth cannot be measured directly with a meter scale. An important method in such case is parallax method. When you hold a pencil in front of you against some specific point on the background or a wall and look at the pencil first through your left eye A, closing the right eye and then look at the pencil through your right eye B, closing the left eye, you would notice that the position of the pencil seems to change with respect to the point on the wall. This is called parallax. 
the distance between the two points of observation is called the basis. In this example, the basis is the distance between the eyes. To measure the distance d of a far away planet S by the parallax method, we observe it from two different positions, A and B on the Earth, separated by a distance AB is equals to B at the same time as shown in figure 2.2. We measure the angle between the two directions along which the planet is viewed at these two points. The angle ASB in figure 2.2 represented by symbol theta is called the parallax angle and parallactic angle. As the planet is very far away, small b upon d is much much less than a and therefore theta is very small. When we approximately take AB as an arc of the length small b of a circle and the center S and the distance D as the radius AS is equals to BS so that AB is equals to small b is equals to D theta where theta is in radians capital D is equals to small b upon theta. Having determined capital D, we can employ a similar method to determine the size or angular diameter of the planet. If a small d is the diameter of the planet and alpha the angular size of the planet, the angle subtended by d at earth, we have alpha is equals to small d divided by capital D. The angle alpha can be measured from the same locations on the earth. It is the angle between the two directions when two diametrically opposite points on the planet are viewed through the telescope. Since d is known, the diameter d of the planet can be determined. By using the equation alpha is equals to small d divided by capital D. Estimation of very small distance, size of a molecule. To measure a very small size like that of a molecule 10 to the power minus 8 to 10 to the power minus 10 meters, we have to adopt a special method. We cannot use a screw gauge or similar instruments. Even a microscope has certain limitations. An optical microscope uses visible light to look at the system under investigation. As light has wave-like features, the resolution to which an optical microscope can be used is the wavelength of light. A detailed explanation can be found in class 12 physics textbook. For visible light, the range of wavelength is from about 4000 angstrom to 7000 angstrom. One angstrom is equal to 10 to the power minus 10 meters. Here an optical microscope cannot resolve particles with size smaller than this. Instead of visible light, we can use electron beam. Electron can be focused by properly designed electric and magnetic fields. The resolution of such an electron microscope is limited finally by the fact that electron can also behave as waves. You will learn more about this in class 12. The wavelength of an electron can be as small as a fraction of an angstrom. Such electron microscope with resolution 0.6 angstrom have been built. They can almost resolve atoms and molecules in a material. In recent times, tunneling microscopy has been developed in which again the limit of resolution is better than angstrom. It is possible to estimate the size of molecules. A simple method for estimating the molecular size of oleic acid is given below. Oleic acid is a soapy liquid with large molecular size of the order of 10 to the power 9 meters. The idea is to first form monomolecular layer of oleic acid on water surface. We dissolve 1 cm cube of oleic acid in alcohol to make a solution of 20 cm cube. Then we can take 1 cm cube of the solution and dilute it to 20 cm cube using alcohol. So the concentration of the solution is equal to 
one by twenty into twenty centimeter cube of oleic acid per centimeter cube of the solution. Next, we lightly sprinkle some lycopodium powder on the surface of water in a large straw and we put one drop of this solution in the water. The oleic acid drop spreads into a thin, large and roughly circular film of molecular thickness of water surface. Then, we quickly measure the diameter of thin film to get its area A. Suppose we have dropped N drops in the water. Initially, we determine the approximate volume of each drop. Volume of N drops of solution is equal to Nv centimeter cube. Amount of oleic acid in this solution is equal to Nv into 1 by 20 into 20 centimeters cube. The solution of oleic acid spreads very fast on the surface of water and forms a very thin layer of thickness T. If this spreads to form a film of area A cm square, then the thickness of the film is T is equals to volume of the film divided by area of the film or thickness is equals to Nv by 20 into 20 A centimeters. If we assume that the film has monomolecular thickness, then this becomes the size or diameter of the molecule of oleic acid. The value of this thickness comes out to be of the order of 10 to the power minus 9 meters. Range of lengths. The size of the object we come across in universe vary over a very wide range. These may vary from the size of order of 10 to the power minus 14 meters of the tiny nucleus of an atom to the size of the order of 10 to the power 26 meters of the extent of the observable universe. Table 2.6 gives the range and the orders of length and size of some of these objects. We also use certain special length units for short and large lengths. These are 1 Fermi. 1 Fermi is equal to 10 to the power minus 15 meters. 1 Angstrom. 1 Angstrom is equal to 10 to the power minus 10 meters. 1 Astronomical Unit. That is 1 AU, average distance of sun from earth, is equal to 1.496 into 10 to the power 11 meters. 1 light air. 1 light air is equal to 9.46 into 10 to the power 15 meters. That is the distance that light travels with velocity of 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per seconds in 1 year. 1 parsec. 1 parsec is equal to 3.08 into 10 to the power 16 meters. Parsec is the distance at which the average radius of Earth's orbit subtends an angle of 1 arc second. Measurement of mass. Mass is a basic property of matter. It does not depend on the temperature, pressure or location of the object in space. The SI unit of mass is kilograms. The prototype of the international standard kilogram supplied by the International Bureau of Weights and Measures are available in many other laboratories of different countries. In India, this is available at the National Physics Laboratory, NPL, New Delhi. While dealing with the atoms and molecules, the kilogram is an inconvenient unit. In this case, there is an important standard unit of mass called the Unified Atomic Mass Unit, U, which has been established for expressing the mass of atoms as one unified atomic unit is equals to one U is equals to one by twelve of the mass of an atom of carbon twelve isotope, including the mass of electrons. That is equal to one point six six into ten to the power minus twenty seven kilograms. Mass of commonly available objects can be determined by a common balance like the one used in a grocery shop. Large masses in the universe like planets, stars, etc., based on Newton's law of gravitation, can be measured by the using gravitational method. 
for measurement of the small masses of atoms and subatomic particles etc we make use of the mass spectrograph in which radius of trajectory is proportional to the mass of a charged particle moving in uniform electric and magnetic field range of masses the masses of the objects we come across in the universe vary over a very wide range these may vary from tiny mass of the order 10 to the power minus 30 kg of an electron to the huge mass of about 10 to the power 55 kg of the known universe table 2.4 gives the range and the order of typical mass of various objects measurement of time to measure any time interval we need a clock we now use an atomic standard of time which is based on the periodic vibrations produced in a cesium atom this is the basis of the cesium clock sometimes called atomic clock used in the national standards such national standards are available in many laboratories in the cesium atomic clock the second is taken as the time needed for nine one nine two six three one seven seven zero vibrations of the radiation corresponding to the transition between two hyperfinite levels of the ground state of cesium 133 atoms the vibrations of the cesium atom regulate the rate of the cesium atomic clock just as the vibration of the balance wheel regulate an ordinary wrist watch or vibrations of a small quartz crystal regulate a quartz wrist watch the cesium atomic clocks are very accurate in principle they provide portable standard the national standard of time interval second as well as the frequency is maintained through four cesium atomic clocks a cesium atomic clock is used at national physics laboratory new delhi to maintain the indian standard of time in our country the npl has the responsibility of maintenance and improvement of physical standards including that of time frequency etc note that indian standard time is linked to the set of atomic clocks the efficient cesium atomic clocks are so accurate that they impart the uncertainty in time realization as plus minus 1 into 10 to the power minus 13 that is one part in 10 to the power 13 this implies that the uncertainty gained over time by such a device is less than one part in 10 to the power 13 they lose or gain no more than three microseconds in one year in view of tremendous accuracy in time measurement the SI unit of length has been expressed in terms of the path length the light travels in certain interval of time. The time interval of events that we come across in universe vary over a very wide range. Table 2.5 gives the range and order of some typical time intervals. You may notice that there is an interesting coincidence between the numbers appearing in table 2.3 and 2.5. Note that the ratio of the longest and the shortest length of the object in our universe is about 10 to the power 41. Interestingly enough, the ratio of the longest and the shortest time interval associated with the events and the objects in our universe is also about 10 to the power 41. This number 10 to the power 41 comes up again in table 2.4, which lists the typical mass of the objects. The ratio of the largest and smallest mass of the objects of our universe is about 10 to the power 41 whole square. Is this a curious coincidence between these large numbers purely accidental? Well, accuracy, precision of instrument and errors in measurement. Measurement is the foundation of all experimental science and technology. The result of every measurement by any measuring instruments contains some uncertainty. This uncertainty is called error. 
every calculated quantity which is based on measured values also has an error we shall distinguish between two terms accuracy and precision the accuracy of a measurement is a measure of how close the measured value is to the true value of the quantity precision tells us to what resolution or limit the quantity is measured the accuracy in measurement may depend on several factors including the limit or resolution of measuring instrument for example suppose the true value of a certain length is near 3.678 cm in one experiment using a measuring instrument of resolution 0.1 cm the measured value is found to be 3.5 cm while in an another experiment using a measured device of greater resolution say 0.01 cm the length is determined to be 3.38 cm the first measurement has more accuracy because it is closer to the true value but less precision its resolution is only 0.1 cm while the second measurement is less accurate but more precise thus every instrument is approximate due to the errors in measurement in general the errors in the measurement can be broadly classified as systemic errors and random errors systemic errors the systemic errors are those errors that tend to be in one direction either positive or negative some of the source of systemic errors are instrumental errors that arise from the errors due to the imperfect design or calibration of the measuring instrument zero error in the instrument etc for example the temperature graduations of a thermometer may be inadequately calibrated it may read 104 degree celsius at boiling point of water at stp whereas it should read 100 degree celsius in a vernier caliper the zero mark of the vernier caliper may not coincide with the zero mark of the main scale or simply an ordinary meter scale may be worn off at one end b imperfection in experimental technique or procedure to determine the temperature of a human body the thermometer placed under armpit will always give a temperature lower than the actual value of the body temperature other external conditions such as change in temperature humidity wind velocity etc during the experiment may systematically affect the measurement personal errors that arise due to an individual's bias lack of proper setting of an apparatus or individual's carelessness in taking observations without observing proper precautions etc for example if you have by habit always hold your hand a bit too far to the right while reading the position of a needle on the scale you will introduce an error due to parallax systemic errors can be minimized by improving experimental techniques selecting better instruments or removing personal bias as far as possible for a given setup these errors may be estimated to a certain extent and the necessary corrections may be applied to the readings random errors the random errors are those errors which occurs irregularly and hence are random with respect to sign and size these can arise due to random and unpredictable fluctuations in the experimental conditions example unpredictable fluctuation in temperature voltage supply mechanical vibrations of experimental setups etc personal unbiased errors by the observer taking readings etc for example when the same person repeats the same observation it is very likely he may get different readings every time least count error the smallest value that can be measured by measuring instrument is the least count all the readings or measured values are good only up to this value The least count error is the error associated with the resolution of instrument. For example, a vernier caliper has the least count as 0.01 cm. 
least count error belongs to the category of random errors but within a limited size it occurs with both systemic and random errors if we use a meter scale for measurement of length it may have graduations at 1 mm division scale spacing or interval using instrument of higher precision improving experimental techniques etc we can reduce the least count error repeating the observations several time and taking the arithmetic mean of all the observations the mean value would be very close to the true value of the measured quantity absolute error relative error and percentage error suppose the values obtained in a several measurement are a1 a2 a3 and so on till an the arithmetic mean of these values is taken as the best possible value of the quantity under the given condition of measurements as a mean is equals to a1 plus a2 plus a3 and so on till an divided by n this is because as explained earlier it is reasonable to suppose that individual measurements are as likely to overestimate as to underestimate the true value of quantity the magnitude of the difference between the true value of the quantity and the individual measurement value is called the absolute error of the measurement in absence of any other method of knowing true value we considered arithmetic mean as the true value then the errors in the individual measurement values are delta a1 is equals to a mean minus a1 delta a2 is equals to a mean minus a2 and so on the delta a calculated above may be positive in certain cases and negative in some other cases but absolute error will always be positive the arithmetic mean of all the absolute errors is taken as final or mean absolute error of the value of physical quantity a it is represented by delta a mean thus delta a mean is equals to sum of all absolute error of measurements divided by n if we do a single measurement the value we get may be in a range a mean plus minus delta a mean a is equals to a mean plus minus delta a mean or a mean minus delta a mean is less than or equal to a this implies that any measurement of physical quantity a is likely to lie between a mean plus delta a mean and a mean minus delta a mean instead of absolute error we often use the relative error or the percentage error the relative error is the ratio of the mean absolute error delta a mean to the mean value a mean of the quantity measured relative error is equals to delta a mean divided by a mean when the relative error is expressed in percent it is called the percentage error thus the percentage error is equals to delta a mean divided by a mean into 100% combination of errors if we do an experiment involving several measurements we know how the errors in all measurements combine for example density is the ratio of mass to the volume of the substance if we have errors in the measurement of mass and of the sizes or dimensions we must know what the error will be in the density of the substance to make such estimates we should learn how errors combine in various mathematical operations for this we use the following procedure a error of a sum or a difference suppose two physical quantities a and b have measured values a plus minus delta a b plus minus delta b respectively where delta a and delta b are their absolute errors we wish to find the error delta z in the sum z is equals to a plus b we have by addition z plus minus delta z is equals to a plus minus delta a 
plus b plus minus delta b the maximum possible error in z delta z is equals to delta a plus delta b for the difference z is equals to a minus b we have z plus minus delta z is equals to a plus minus delta a minus b plus minus delta b is equals to a minus b plus minus delta a plus minus delta b plus minus delta z is equals to plus minus delta a plus minus delta b or the maximum value of the error delta z is again delta a plus delta b hence the rule when two quantities are added or subtracted the absolute errors in the final result is the sum of the absolute errors in the individual quantities error of a product or a quotient suppose z is equals to a b and the measured value of a and b are a plus minus delta a and b plus minus delta b then z plus minus delta z is equals to a plus minus delta a into b plus minus delta b expanding the equation and dividing left hand side by z and right hand side by ab we have 1 plus minus delta z by z is equals to 1 plus minus delta a by a plus minus delta b by b plus minus delta a by a into delta b by b since delta a and delta b are small we shall ignore their product hence the maximum relative error is equals to delta z by z is equals to delta a by a plus delta b by b you can easily verify that this is true for division also hence the rule when two quantities are multiplied or divided the relative error in the result is the sum of the relative errors in their multipliers error in a case of measured quantity raised to a power suppose z is equals to a square then delta z by z is equals to delta a by a plus delta a by a is equals to 2 delta a by a hence the relative error in a square is equals to 2 times the error in a in general if z is equals to a to the power b b to the power q by c to the power r delta z by z is equals to p into delta a by a plus q into delta b by b plus r into delta c by c hence the rule the relative error in a physical quantity raised to the power k is the k times the relative error in the individual quantity significant figures as discussed above every measurement involves errors thus the result of measurement should be reported in a way that indicates the precision of measurement normally the reported result of measurement is a number that includes all digits in the number that are known reliably plus the first digit that is uncertain the reliable digits plus the first uncertain digits are known as significant digits or significant figures if we put say the period of oscillation of a simple pendulum is 1.62 seconds the digits 1 and 6 are reliable and certain while the digit 2 is uncertain thus the measured value has three significant figures the length of an object reported after measurements to be 287.5 cm has four significant figures the digit 2 8 7 are certain while the digit 5 is uncertain clearly reporting the result of measurement that includes more digits than the significant digits is superfluous and also misleading since it would give a wrong idea about the precision of measurement the rule for determining the number of significant figures can be understood from the following example significant figures indicate 
as already mentioned the precision of measurement which depends on the least count of measuring instrument a choice of change of different units does not change the number of significant digit or figures in the measurement this important remark make most of the following observations clear for example the length 2.308 cm has four significant figures but the different units the same value can be written as 0.02308 meters or maybe 23.08 millimeters or 23080 micrometers all these numbers have the same number of significant figures digits 2308 namely 4 this shows that the location of the decimal point is of no consequence in determining the number of significant figures the example gives the following rules all the non zero digits are significant all the zeros between the two non zero digits are significant no matter where the decimal point is if at all if the number is less than 1 the zeros on the right of the decimal point but to the left of the first non zero digits are not significant the terminal or trailing zeros in a number without a decimal point are not significant thus 123 meters is equals to 12300 cm is equals to 123000 mm has three significant figures the trailing zeros being not significant however you can also see the next observation the trailing zeros in a number with a decimal point are significant the numbers 3.500 or 0.06900 have four significant figures each there can be some confusion regarding the trailing zeros suppose a length is reported to be 4.700 meters it is evident that the zeros here are meant to convey the precision of measurement and are therefore significant if these were not it would be superfluous to write them explicitly the reported measurement would have been simply 4.7 meters now suppose we change the unit then 4.700 meters is equals to 470 cm is equals to 4700 mm is equals to 0.004700 km since the last number has trailing zeros in a number with no decimal we would conclude erroneously from the observations one above that the number has two significant figures while in fact it has four significant figures and a mere change of units cannot change the number of significant figures to remove such ambiguities in determining the number of significant figures the best way is to report every measurement in scientific notation in the power of 10 in this notation every number is expressed as a into 10 to the power b where a is a number between 1 and 10 and b is any positive or negative exponent or power of 10 in order to get an approximate idea of the number we may round off the numbers a to 1 for a is less than 5 and to 10 for a is less than 10 or equal to 10 and greater than 5 then a number can be expressed approximately as 10 to the power b in which the exponent or power b of 10 is the order of magnitude of the physical quantity when only an estimate is required the quantity is of the order of 10 to the power b for example the diameter of the earth 1.28 into 10 to the power 7 meters is of the order of 10 to the power 7 meters with the order of magnitude 7 the diameter of the hydrogen atom is 1.06 into 10 to the power minus 10 meters is of the order of 10 to the power minus 10 meters with the order of magnitude minus 10 
Thus, the diameter of the earth is 17 orders of the magnitude larger than the hydrogen atom. It is often customary to write the decimal after the first digit. Now, the confusion mentioned in A above disappears. 4.700 meters is equals to 4.700 into 10 to the power 2 centimeters. 4.700 into 10 to the power 3 millimeters is equals to 4.700 into 10 to the power minus 3 kilometers. The power of 10 is irrelevant to the determination of significant figures. However, all the zeros appearing in the base number in the scientific notation are significant. Each number in this case has four significant figures. Thus, in the scientific notation, no confusion arises about the trailing zeros in the base number A. They are always significant. The scientific notation is ideal for reporting measurement, but if this is not adopted, we use the rules adopted in preceding examples. For a number greater than 1 without decimal, the trailing zeros are not significant. For a number with decimal, the trailing zeros are significant. The digit 0 conventionally put on the left of the decimal for a number less than 1 is never significant, like 0 0.1250. However, the zeros at the end of such a number are significant in a measurement. The multiplying or dividing factors, which are neither rounded numbers nor numbers presenting measured values, are exact and have infinite number of significant digits. For example, in R is equals to D by 2 or S is equals to 2 pi R, the factor 2 is an exact number and can be written as 2.0, 2.00 or 2.0000 as required. Similarly, in t is equals to t by n, n is an exact number. Rules for arithmetic operations with significant figures. The result of a calculation involving approximate measured values of quantities that is, values with limited number of significant figures must reflect the uncertainties in the original measured values. It cannot be more accurate than the original measured values themselves on which the result is based. In general, the final results should not have more significant figures than the original data from which it was obtained. Thus, if mass of an object is measured to be, say, 4.237 gram, four significant figures and its volume is measured to be 2.51 centimeter cube, then its density by mere arithmetic division is 1.688047808.76 gram per centimeter cube, up to 11 decimal places. It would be clearly absurd and irrelevant to record the calculated value of density to such a precision when the measurement on which the value is based much have less precision. The following rules for arithmetic operations with significant figures ensure that the final result of a calculation is shown with the precision that is consistent with the precision of the input measured values. In multiplication or division, the final result should retain as many significant figures as are there in the original number with the least significant figures. Thus, in the example above, density should be reported to three significant figures. Density is equals to 4.237 grams divided by 2.51 centimeters cube is equals to 1.69 gram per centimeter cube. Similarly, if the speed of light is given as 3.00 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second, three significant figures and one year, one year is equals to 365.25 days has 3.1557 into 10 to the power 7 seconds, five significant figures. The light year is 9.47 into 10 to the power 15 meters, three significant figures. 
in addition or subtraction the final result should retain as many decimal places as are there in the number with the least decimal places rounding off the uncertain digits the result of computation with approximate numbers which contain more than one uncertain digit should be rounded off the rules for rounding off numbers to appropriate significant figures are obvious in most cases a number 2.746 rounded off to three significant figures is 2.75 while the number 2.743 would be 2.74 the rule by convention is that preceding digit is raised by 1 if the insignificant digit is to be dropped is more than 5 and is left unchanged if the latter is less than 5 but what if the number is 2.745 in which the insignificant digit is 5 Here the convention is that if the preceding digit is even the insignificant digit is simply dropped and if it is odd the preceding digit is raised by 1 then the number 2.745 rounded off to three significant figures becomes 2.74 On the other hand the number 2.735 rounded off to three significant figures becomes 2.74 since the preceding digit is odd in any involved or complex multi step calculation you should retain in intermediate steps one digit more than the significant digits and round off to proper significant figures at the end of the calculation similarly a number known to be within many significant figures such as in 2.9979 2458 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second for the speed of light in vacuum is rounded off to an approximate value 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second which is often employed in computations finally remember that the exact number that appears in formula like 2 pi in t is equals to 2 pi under root l by g have a large infinite number of significant figures the value of pi is equals to 3.141526 and so on is known to a large number of significant figures you may take the value as 3.142 or 3.14 for pi with limited number of significant figures as required in specific cases rules for determining the uncertainty in the results of arithmetic calculations the rules for determining the uncertainty or error in the number or measured quantities in arithmetic operations can be understood in the following examples if the length and breadth of a thin rectangular sheets are measured using a meter scale as 16.2 cm 10.1 cm respectively there are three significant figures in each measurement it means that the length l may be written as l is equals to 16.2 plus minus 0.1 cm is equals to 16.2 cm plus minus 0.6% similarly the breadth may be written as b is equals to 10.1 plus minus 0.1 cm is equals to 10.1 cm plus minus 1% then the error of the product of two or more experimental values using the combination of the error rule will be l into b is equals to 1 63.62 cm square plus minus 1.6% that is equal to 163.62 plus minus 2.6 cm square this leads us to quote the final result as lb is equals to 164 plus minus 3 cm square here 3 cm square is the uncertainty or error in the estimation of area of rectangular sheet 
if a set of experimental data is specified to n significant figures a result obtained by combining the data will also be valid to n significant figures however if the data are subtracted the number of significant figures can be reduced for example 12.9 gram minus 7.06 gram both specified to three significant figures cannot properly be evaluated as 5.84 gram but only as 5.8 gram as uncertainties in subtraction or addition may combine in a different fashion a smallest number of decimal place rather than number of significant figures in any of the number added or subtracted the relative error of a value of number specified to significant figures depends not only on n but also on the number itself for example the accuracy in measurement of mass 1.02 gram is plus minus 0.01 gram whereas another measurement 9.89 gram is also accurate to plus minus 0.01 gram the relative error in 1.02 gram is equals to plus minus 0.01 divided by 1.02 into 100% is equals to plus minus 1% similarly the relative error is equals to plus minus 0.1% finally remember that intermediate result in a multi step computation should be calculated to one more significant figure in every measurement than the number of the digits in the least precise measurement these should be justified by the data and then the arithmetic operations may be carried out otherwise rounding errors can build up for example the reciprocal of 9.58 calculated after rounding off to the same number of significant figures 3 is 0.104 but the reciprocal of 0.104 calculated to three significant figures is 9.62 however if we had written 1 by 9.58 is equals to 0.1044 then taken the reciprocal to three significant figures we would have retrieved the original value of 9.58 This example justifies the idea to retain one more extra digit than the number of digits in the last precise measurement. In intermediate step of complex multi-step calculations in order to avoid additional errors in the process of rounding off the numbers. Dimensions of physical quantities. The nature of a physical quantity is described by its dimensions. All the physical quantities represented by derived units can be expressed in terms of some combinations of seven fundamental or base quantities. We shall call these base quantities as the seven dimensions of the physical world, which are denoted. with square brackets thus length has the dimension l mass m time t electric current a thermodynamic temperature k luminous intensity cd and the amount of substance mole the dimensions of a physical quantity are the parts or exponents to which the base quantities are raised to represent that quantity note that using the square brackets round a quantity means that we are dealing with the dimensions of the quantity in mechanics all the physical quantities can be written in terms of dimensions l m and t for example the volume occupied by an object is expressed as the product of length breadth and height or three lengths hence the dimension of the volume is l cube as the volume is independent of mass and time it is said to possess zero dimensions in mass and zero dimensions in time and three dimensions in length similarly force as the product of mass and acceleration can be expressed as force is equals to mass into acceleration is equals to mass into length by time square the dimensions of force are ml t to the power minus 
Thus, the force has one dimension in mass, one dimension in length, and minus two dimensions in time. The dimensions in all the other base quantities are zero. Note that in this type of representation, the magnitudes are not considered. It is the quantity of the type of the physical quantity that enters. Thus, a change in velocity, initial velocity, average velocity, final velocity, and speed all are equivalent in this context. Hence, all these quantities can be expressed as length by time. Their dimensions are L by T. Dimension formula and dimensional equations. The expression which shows how and which of the base quantities represent the dimensions of physical quantity is called the dimensional formula of the given physical quantity. For example, the dimensional formula of the volume is m to the power 0, l to the power 3, t to the power 0 and that of speed or velocity is m to the power 0, l, t to the power minus 1. Similarly, m to the power 0, l, t to the power minus 2 is the dimensional formula for acceleration and m, l to the power minus 3, t to the power 0 that of mass density. An equation obtained by equating a physical quantity with its dimensional formula is called the dimensional equation of a physical quantity. Thus, the dimensional equation are the equations which represent the dimensions of a physical quantity in terms of the base quantities. For example, the dimensional equation of volume V, speed V, force F and mass density rho may be expressed as dimension of volume is equals to m to the power 0 l to the power 3 t to the power 0 velocity v dimension is m to the power 0 l t to the power minus 1 force dimension is m l t to the power minus 2 density rho dimension is m l to the power minus 3 t to the power 0 the dimensional equation can be obtained from the equation representing the relation between the physical quantities. The dimensional formula of a large number and the wide variety of physical quantities derived from the equation representing the relationships among other physical quantities and expressed in terms of the base quantities are given in Appendix 9 for your guidance and ready reference. Dimensional Analysis and Its Applications The recognition of concept of dimensions which guide the description of physical behavior is the basic importance as only those physical quantities can be added or subtracted which have same dimensions. A thorough understanding of dimensional analysis helps us in deducing certain relations among different physical quantities and checking the derivation, accuracy and dimensional consistency or homogeneity of various mathematical expressions. When magnitude of two or more physical quantities are multiplied, their units should be treated in the same manner as the ordinary algebraic symbols. We can cancel identical units in the numerator and denominator. The same is true for the dimension of a physical quantity. Similarly, Physical quantities represented by symbols on both the sides of a mathematical equation must have the same dimension. Checking the dimensional consistency of equations. The magnitude of the physical quantities may be added together or subtracted from one and another only if they have the same dimensions. In other words, we can add or subtract similar physical quantities, thus velocity cannot be added to force or an electric current cannot be subtracted from the thermodynamic temperature. This simple principle is called the principle of homogeneity of dimensions in an equation is extremely useful in checking the corrections of the equation. If the dimensions of all the terms are not same, the equation is wrong. Hence, if we derive an expression for the length or distance of an object regardless of the symbol appearing in the original mathematical relation, when all the individual dimensions are simplified, the remaining dimensions must be that of length. Similarly, if we derive an equation of a speed, the dimensions on both the sides of the equations when simplified must be of length by time or L by T. 
Dimensions are customarily used as the preliminary test of the consistency of an equation. When there is some doubt about the correctness of the equation, however, the dimensional consistency does not guarantee correct equations. It is certain to that extent of the dimensionless quantities or functions. The arguments of the special functions, such as the trigonometric, logarithmic, and exponential functions, must be dimensionless. A pure number a ratio of similar physical quantities, such as angles, as ratio length by length, reflect. of index as ratio speed of light in vacuum by speed of light in medium has no dimensions it may be noted that a test of consistency of dimensions tells us no more and no less than a test of consistency of units but has the advantage that we need to commit ourselves to a particular choice of units and we need not to worry about the conversions among the multiples and submultiples of the units it may be borne in mind that if an equation fails this consistency test it is proved wrong but if it passes is it is not proved right thus a dimensionally correct equations need not to be actually an exact or correct equation but a dimensionally wrong or incorrect or inconsistent equation must be wrong deducing relation among the physical quantities the method of dimensions can sometimes be used to deduce relation among the physical quantities for this we should know the dependence of the physical quantity on the other quantities up to three physical quantities or linearly independent variables and consider it as a product type of the dependence Dimensional analysis is very useful in deducing relations among the interdependent physical quantities. However, dimensionless constant cannot be obtained by this method. The method of dimension can only test the dimensional validity but not the exact relationship between the physical quantities in any equation. It does not distinguish between the physical quantities having same dimensions. Summary. First, Physics is a quantitative science based on the measurement of physical quantities. Certain physical quantities have been chosen as fundamental or base quantities, such as length, mass, time, electric units, thermodynamic temperature, amount of substance, and luminous intensity. Two, each base quantity is defined in terms of a certain basic, arbitrarily chosen, properly standardized reference standard called unit. The units of the fundamental or base quantities are called the fundamental or base units. Three other physical quantities derived from the base quantities can be expressed as a combination of the base units and are called derived units. A complete set of units, both fundamental and derived, is called the system of units. Fourth, the international system of units (SI), based on the seven. base units is at present internationally accepted unit system and is widely used throughout the world 5 the si unit are used in all physical measurements for both the base quantities and the derived quantities obtained from them certain derived units are expressed by the means of the si units with the special names such as joules newton watt etc Six. The SI units have well-defined and internationally accepted unit symbols, such as m for meters, kg for kilogram, s for seconds, a for ampere, n for newton, etc. Seventh, physical measurements are usually expressed for small and large quantities in scientific notation with powers of ten. Scientific notation and the prefix are used to simplify measurement notation and numerical computations, giving indication to the precision of the numbers. Eight. Certain general rules and guidelines must be followed for using notations for physical quantities and standard symbols for SI units. Some other units and SI prefix for expressing properly the physical quantities and measurements. Ninth, in computing any physical quantity, the units for derived quantities involved in relationships are treated as though they were algebraic quantities till the desired units are obtained. 
10. Direct and indirect method can be used for the measurement of physical quantities. In measured quantities, while expressing the result, the accuracy and precision of measuring instrument along with the errors in measurement should be taken into account. 11. In measured and computed quantities, proper significant figures only should be retained. Rules for determining the number of significant figures, carrying out arithmetic operations with them, and rounding off the uncertain digits must be followed. 12. The dimensions of base quantities and combinations of these dimensions describe the nature of physical quantities. Dimensionless analysis can be used to check the dimensional consistency of equations, deducing relation among the physical quantities, etc. A dimensionally consistent equations need not to be actually exact or correct equation, but a dimensionally wrong or incorrect equation must be wrong.